I'm Ashley. And I'm Brooke. And you're here with us on A Teachers Who Talk Crime Podcast. Hey everyone. Hi. Hello. How are we doing? How, are doing? How are we doing? Yeah, we're doing great over here. Holidays are over. I just they put are. my Christmas stuff up. Um, yes, I'm slacking. I just, you know, took my time. My tree is still up. Yeah. So. She will be coming down this upcoming weekend. There you go. There you go. Because I can't take her down with the girls here. Uh, mommy, can I help? Mommy, can oh, I? Oh, they just want to help. Mommy, mommy. And, and it just makes it go 10 times longer. And I know some people are like, well, these are the times that you're going to want later. I understand that. Mm-hmm. But right now, mommy just needs to handle it. Right now. Yeah. Let mommy do it. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Mommy's a pro tree taker downer. She is a professional. I put that tree yeah. up in 15 minutes, ornaments and all. Bada boom, sh- bada shping. Okay. Wow, that's impressive. Yes. I don't play because mm. it's in a corner, so the back has no ornaments. Why? No one's going to see it. Uh, see, James wouldn't let us do that. Yeah, we have to have a ribbon going down the back. You have to have the little bubbles, the little ribbon bubbles going down the back. The ornaments mm. have to be on the back. There's, who's going to see that? Oh, I know. I know. Who? No, nope, nobody's going to see that. Mm-mm. Granted, you know, Aiko likes to act like a cat sometimes. So when her ball got stuck onto the tree, I just felt like we were going to have an incident, incidents where the tree just... Kapow. Yeah. But yeah. Luckily, that did not happen. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. She got yelled at a lot, though. I remember. I was on a FaceTime call mm-hmm. once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you are watching on YouTube, um, as you should, because we now have a YouTube uh, sorry for my appearance. It's um just, you know, Sunday scaries, and I decided to really fit that role today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I also look exhausted because this was a jam packed weekend. Jam packed weekend. Uh, we was all over the place. So, I'm about ready to crawl onto my bed. So, well, tell them what you tried for the first time this weekend. I did. I tried um, CrossFit for the first time this whoop, weekend. Whoop. I did. Um, it was a really fun time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout out to CrossFit Petrum. Okay. Hey, hey. It, it was a good time. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, as we all know, I am an educator and I make three cents an yeah. hour. Um, so I'm going to try and figure out a way to finagle it because I'm currently paying for a gym membership. Um, but I would like to incorporate CrossFit. Once a As week, you should. As you, you know, should. Just welcome to, to the cult. Like strength because it was the support in there is wild. I know. Like y'all are a different type of mm-hmm. a group. Like people were like high fiving me and, and like, oh, you did great in that workout. And I'm like, but you don't know me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is the first time you've seen me, and you are saying that I'm doing a good job. As someone with a words of affirmation, I was fulfilled in there. Yeah. I was. Thoroughly fulfilled. It, Cup overfloweth. Oh my gosh. I left just like, I just never want to yeah. not be here again. Like yeah. I, I want to live here. Mm-hmm. I, it's awesome. It, You've drank, you have drank the Kool-Aid, my friend. I have. So if anyone, you know, I'm not going to start a GoFundMe because like, that's crazy. Um, but. <laughs> Help me go to CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, because honestly. Since I've started um, working out, my mental health has been mm-hmm. like a thousand. It's been a complete switch. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, I, even, I, just, I went only two days last week. And even just like two days, I was like, okay, I'm back. I'm back. I can do yeah. this. And then, you know, we went to the conference and I had freaking Doritos for breakfast. And then I kind of started okay. like, getting in my head a little bit. And I was like, okay. So then today I like woke up and I was like, okay, we're going to meal prep. We're going to go to the grocery store. So like I meal prepped salads. I ordered my factor meals again. I'm yes, do- factor yep. meals. Yep. I'm going to do every other week, I think. I think that would nice. be very doable. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I ordered six, so I think some of them could roll over to like the next week. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, James doesn't eat them. They're not for him, but if he wants one, I guess I can't be greedy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I can, like, I get that. Like, I think that it's really important that we do things for our body. Yes. Because it's, it's all linked. Yeah, it's like it's just like I'm very thankful. I'm mm-hmm. I'm just very thankful because that place I was in was just not. I didn't even recognize that girl, man. Mm-hmm. I didn't know who she was. She was a different person, but she's gone now, so that's great. Hopefully, she never yeah. comes out. I locked her away. You know, awesome. she's just but not welcome still here. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So. Big things are coming. Uh, yes. Ashley made a really cool vision board for 2024, which I, I think she should talk about because now I want to go do it. And um, <laughs> I think it's just a really good idea. <laughs> um, I can't take complete credit because I saw it on TikTok, but I just decided to, you know, make it a little extra because I'm an extra person. But I saw that people were making vision board bingo cards. Mm-hmm. So I went on Canva and I picked the template I liked and I just edited the colors and I put all of my goals for 2024 on this vision board. I made it my background screen on my phone. So I always see it. So I'm always like, all right, these are the things that I want for myself this year. And as I you know, achieve those goals, I'm going to mark them off on my bingo board. And when I get a bingo, I'm just going to do something really nice for myself. I haven't decided what yet. I haven't really... I don't know if I want to do like a traditional bingo first and then go into like the special ones like four corners or like yeah. railroad tracks or like the box around uh, the Good. middle square or something yeah. like that. I have to see how quickly I achieve them to really make that call. But I'm really excited. I think, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so it's, awesome. You know, it's been really great. It's been really great. I, I like that idea though. Because yeah. I like bingo, as we all know. You do. I really like bingo. You do love bingo. <laughs> I do. So I feel like this is perfect for me. And yes. I need to go do it tomorrow. You do. And then just mm-hmm. when I tell you, every time I open oh, my phone, I'm like, all right, let me check. All right, bet. Like, it just, it's a constant reminder of what I want to do. So I really like that. Yeah. So. That's awesome. That's There's a lot really of cool good. things on that board. I hope I get done yeah. this year. So, yeah. We'll <laughs> um, well, um... How did you guys like our very, very special episode last week? How crazy was that? How wild. I like, still can't believe that happened. I know. I, I was telling someone about it and I was like, I am just like in disbelief that like he chose us. And I'm also just in disbelief how quickly it happened. Yeah. Because it was like in the matter, like... In the first encounter with him, we met with him the next day. Yeah. Yeah. And then recorded the following day. So in the yes. span of two days, we had talked extensively to this man. Mm-hmm. He decided, mm-hmm. yeah, we're going to do this. Then we came the next day and recorded this. It's crazy. It's wild. wild. It's really and I wild. I think that... I just think it's a big honor that he like chose us. And I really hope that like we helped get his story out there yes. and gave him the confidence that he needs to like really go and tell his story. Cause he he was one of the easiest people that we've ever had on this show. Oh. I don't Where's think it? there was a dull moment in the there was no lull in the conversation. There was a dull moment. There was no like reaching for words. And the amount of like We talked to him, like when I say extensively, the first time we spoke to him, I think we jumped on the call around like two or three. Two. Two, I think it was like two. And we didn't get off the call till five. And that was without recording anything. Yep. And just like getting to know him. And like, it was just like all around. And then the next day we talked to him for an hour before we even started recording. Like we didn't speak to him the night before. Yep. Yep. And then and we then recorded, on, and then we talked to him an hour after. Yes, like yeah, it was crazy. It was, it really was. It, it really yeah. was. And he yeah. he's just an awesome person. He is so genuine. Mm-hmm. I think that he has a very big heart. And mm-hmm. um, if you do have anyone that you know that could benefit from speaking to him, like you know that you you obviously heard that Dominic wants to kind of help people. So you know. 
go and reach out to him. He's more than willing. He said mm-hmm. that on the podcast. Yep. And really just see what we can do for him, you yeah. know, as yeah. a community. Definitely. But also before we even jump any further, I, we are chatting a lot today and just like, you know us, that's what we do. But Brooke just did big things. <laughs> She just did. did big things, like real big things. You yes. need to tell them about the big things that you did. So you know that we had Lisa from Teacher mm-hmm. Heart Out, the CEO of Teacher Heart Out on mm-hmm. the podcast. And we were promoting the summer cruise, which again, Ashley and I will be on doing our live show on there. Oh my gosh. So you guys could meet so, us and then like party yes. with us for real. Like, come on. So come please on. go register. If you think that money is an issue, there is a payment plan. Um, that you can do with Lisa. Also, your significant others are welcome. Your teacher mm-hmm. besties are welcome. Like you can come on board with anybody, your family, yes. whatever it may be. Um, but from that, mm-hmm. Lisa actually reached out to me because I am middle school and middle school teachers, if you're not one, then we're kind of like, we're better than you attitude. I would say, I'd say the majority of middle school teachers have that like mindset, right? And so we don't particularly care for PD because we're like, oh, that's so elementary, blah, blah, blah. right? Um, but I do love PD. I, I always genuinely give it my best. So me and my coworker, Jessica Medley, have started presenting locally. Well, Lisa reached out and said that a middle school had asked her to bring three presenters to their middle school and present on multiple topics. And she asked if I would like to be a presenter. And so she flew Jessica and I down to Shreveport, Louisiana, Mm -hmm. and we got to speak to a middle school there on engagement. Our title was Engaged to Engagement. And it was amazing. Like, I don't know what takes over my body when I speak, but like, it's, I guess I, I don't know because sometimes I even like, When I teach a lesson, I'm like, how did I know that? How did I know that information? I didn't prepare for that. I don't know. But it went amazing. It did go really well. Obviously, you have some teachers that are super engaged and they're there to learn. They want to learn. Then Mm -hmm. you have your 20-year teachers that are like, there's nothing you can teach me. You need to go away, you blonde little white lady. Right? So, and that's okay. That's totally fine. I get it. We all have those people on our staff. But the whole experience in itself was so awesome. Um, mm. It was a very quick trip. Um, we flew in, did did the presentation, and then we flew out the next morning. But that night, Lisa took us out to dinner, the Juicy Crab. It was fabulous. Mm. And then, yep. And then Jessica and I watched Saltburn. And if you have seen Saltburn, I need say no more. If you have not seen Saltburn, please do want not watch it with your children in the room nor watch it with your parents in the room. But worth watching. Worth watching. It's it's interesting. I mean, I figured my kids were a given, but why not my parents? I'm, you know, even, even you and Trudy... Is there a lot of sexual things going God, on? There is. They like, be doing sexual things? But like not like sexual things, like you think about sexual things, like sexual things that we just would not even think about. <gasps> things. Not good sexual things. Weird sexual thing. Oh, yeah, Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. yeah. I don't think I need to see this. I think I just need to. I think you do. Go, I think you do. I think I just need to go find someone on TikTok who's like seen it and can give me like a review with like the spots because I think that's all I really need to happen. All right, it's not. It's a deep movie. It's deep. It's deep. It's deep. <sighs> yeah. Ah. Uh. Uh. Anyways, so that's what I did. And um, from there, I really hope that Lisa and I and the podcast and Jessica, we can all kind of like continue to work together because it's an amazing company. Um, Not only does Teach Your Heart Out have the cruise, but they do have some other big PDs that they do like in Washington and in Vegas Mm -hmm. and then in Tampa. Mm -hmm. Um, So even if you don't want to go on the cruise, they are having a conference before we board the cruise in Tampa. So it's like you could go to the conference and then not go on the cruise or you could go on the cruise and not go to the conference part. So it's kind of however you want to do it. Yeah. Again, that company is just amazing and she really does outsource amazing teachers both from the Instagram world, TikTok world and just connections that she's made. Um, mm-hmm. 
And I think that she's doing an awesome job at what she's doing. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. Official. That's real. It's, it's, it's a real resume great. builder right there, Brookie. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. We got to give another person a shout out, right? We got to get to our... We got to get to our... Oh, Estudiante Estrella. Yeah. I was um, like, who? So, who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you who. Um, <laughs> our star student this week is from Jewel M. Nelly. Jewel M. Nelly. Jewel M. Nelly. Jewel M. Nelly. Yep. Jewel M. Nelly. If you want to go and take a ride with, ride me. with me. Yep. Mm-hmm. Good. And the title is Thank You So Much. For and your course, review? No, just thank you so much. Okay. And the five stars are there. Oh, I like that it almost sounded like balloon, balloon, balloon. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Twist. I like that. I like that. And this review is kind of long, so bear with me. Okay. Um, but it's it's really sweet. Thank you so much for your podcast. These five stars are for you. Yeah. I stumbled across Brooke's Instagram account and she cracked me up. I caught her shout out about her true crime podcast. At the time, I only dabbled in true crime and Brooke is entertaining. So I figured I'd check it out. Oh, and I was also a teacher. I started listening when there were only three episodes. Mm. And then I was introduced to Miss Branny with three Ys and an underscore. And it was love at first here. I can tell anyone and everyone who will listen what an awesome podcast this is. I am no longer a teacher, but I am a behavior tech. And I still work in the same school district. But now I support behaviors. Mm -hmm. And this podcast had a little something to do with that. Behaviors in our school district have increased tremendously in the past few years. So I joined our behavior team and we are not only reactive, but focusing on being proactive with Mm. these behaviors. Nice. Anyway, you ladies are amazing and I enjoy listening to you every week. Oh, and ladies, way to slay that Halloween special. It was phenomenal. Now I have more podcasters to listen to. You ladies continue to amaze me with your wit, entertaining ways, creativity, and passion for serving others. Keep up the great work for your, for the record. Your banter is my favorite. Thank you for all you do as podcasters and educators. The bell doesn't dismiss you, but they do. Sorry this is so long. There's just so much to say about this amazing podcast. Wow. That was so sweet. That was really That sweet. was so sweet. And like, wow. we inspired you to go and like do behavior stuff. Like, wow. What? Oh my and it was love at first here when she heard you. What? I was, oh my god! Brandy with three Y's and an underscore. Don't forget the underscore. Oh yeah. my gosh. That was such a sweet review. Wow. Julem Nelly. Yep. Julem All Nelly. right. Julem Nelly. I thank you so much for your review. This gold stars for you. Bing. Yeah. Mm. Mm. What a sweet review. Yeah. That was so sweet. That was nice. That was real nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That really sparked something in my soul. Well, Ashley, we don't have an interview today. We are back to normal cases. We are. But but if you are listening and you ever want to come on the podcast with your story um, about a case that maybe we've done, haven't done, that you're related to, we would really like to like jump into this new thing. Absolutely. But until then, this is also the death is about to begin. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's me so on. Ashley has now corrected me. Sit down, shut up. The death is about to begin. Ahora. Trigger warnings for this episode are death and mentions of suicide. One thing that we've heard many times from our estudiantes, and I feel like I say this a lot because I just had a deja vu moment real quick from like a past episode. So maybe I said this already. I'm going to say it again. You guys really love that we bring you cases that are not worldwide, that Mm -hmm. are little teeny tiny cases that no one's ever heard mm-hmm. of. So I this agree. case is no different today. And it's another one that I learned from my good old faithful TikTok. So shout out to TikTok yeah. user at crime underscore cast 
because I would have never known about this if it wasn't yep. for you. I follow uh, a lot of those accounts too. Mm-hmm. And they have the ones that are like, oh, you should blow up this case of like Gabby Petito. Like you should blow up all these other cases like you blew up this one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was just like, oh, let me take a peek. So I do have yep. some more in my back pocket that I could do at a later time. Okay. okay. Um, and it's important to note that this case is still awaiting trial. So everything that occurred is still alleged, which is why I said, why we said the death is about to begin, mm, not the murder. Because okay. we're not, you know, everybody's, you know, innocent and so proven guilty. But, you yep, know, after you hear what I got to say, make your own. We also don't want to be sued because we ain't got no money. Yeah, we sure don't. Mm-mm. So not please a penny. leave us alone. I got this many. I got this many. That's this a, many for you. That's a good start. You I know? Got, I got this many. Okay, okay. And you but got this is not American. There. Well, this is, yeah, this is not American currency. So I don't really know how far this is going to get you guys. Oh, true, 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 true. Okay. But, okay. but that's what we have collectively. So that's yeah. what you will receive. Yes. Um, but don't do that because it's all alleged. Yes. Okay. So we will begin today's lesson in the early hours of June 6, 2023 in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. At around 9 a.m., 18-year-old Blake Linkus came frantically out of the bedroom in the rental home he was staying in with a group of friends that he had just graduated from Philo High School in Duncan Falls, Ohio. So they are on this senior trip, if you will, because they just graduated. Now that everyone was jolted awake, they instantly noticed the stab wound in his um, chest. So everyone is also now awake and panicking. This is where sources differ. One source stated that Blake kept asking over and over again where Natalie was. And then another source said that he said that Natalie wasn't waking up at all. So I'm just not sure which one was the right. I don't know if he was like, Mm -hmm. where's Natalie or Natalie's not waking up. Okay. Okay. Regardless of the fact, he was referring to his ex-girlfriend, 18-year-old Natalie Martin. And I'll get into why they're no longer together later on. So Natalie was also in attendance on this post-graduation trip. Two of the friends on the trip entered the bedroom and discovered Natalie on the floor. One of them began performing CPR on her, but unfortunately, it was too late. Natalie's body was already cold and rigor was already setting in. Yeah. Yeah. The Horry County Police Department would arrest Blake two days later for Natalie's murder as they believe that he strangled her to death. Now, let's just take into account. He was in this he room a stab with her. Wound. He has a stab wound, a self-inflicted stab wound. Oh. Yes. And he was in this where he came out of the room. It's early in the morning. So, like, how long were you in there? Allegedly. Right. With this body. Mind you, rigor is already setting in, which means yeah. she had to have been there. For a few hours. hmm Yeah. And you just in this room. Allegedly. Mm. You know? Okay. All right. Mm. And we're talking about like early hours. Like you're thinking, you're like, when you say early hours, you're like three, four in the morning. No, like 9 a.m. Like that's, that's early. Okay. Okay. Because I feel like I would have said we early if it's like a 3 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people were still asleep. Like these teenagers were still asleep. Mm -hmm. Because remember, they're on a trip. So I'll get into what they were doing the night before and stuff like that. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, let me first give you some background information on Natalie. And then I'm going to give you some more information on Natalie and Blake's relationship. So I'm going to read a snippet from her obituary. Because this is the only bit of information that I could find about who she was. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Other than the fact of what horribly happened. Right. Right Right. happened, yeah. Natalie lived her life to the fullest with joy, laughter, and love. She brought true happiness to all that knew her. She had a free, pure, and wild spirit with a contagious laugh, a personality out of this world that could bring anyone out of their darkest of days. Natalie enjoyed all of nature's beauty. She loved to hunt, shoot guns, fish, wrangle snakes, plant, and nurture flowers, and could gut and skin a deer better than most grown men. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Wow. She's doing everything. Natalie is doing everything. Yes, She is a Southern girl. She sure is. Natalie spent much time loving on her dogs, Radar, Hella, and Tiny, and Little B, her many chickens, and her cat, Phoebe. Like, what? 
She like, could be a veterinarian. Like, is she, is she, what can't she do? Okay. Uh, like, seriously. Wow. She had a lifelong love for softball and soccer. Natalie's beauty shined like a ray of sunlight and her smile could brighten the whole room. Her glowing blonde hair and beautiful blue eyes represented that she was truly an angel here on earth. Hmm. She's a jack of all trades. Like, jeez. And she's athletic. Wow. Like, she's just doing it all and then could skin a deer? Yeah. Better than a grown man? Wow. You, you go, girl. Okay. Okay. Like, Natalie. you are, you are a boss babe material. She is. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. She was working at a daycare called Sundale Kids with her best friend, Brooklyn Farrell. The two had been best friends since they were 11 years old. According to her obituary, Natalie formed many special bonds with all the precious little ones she cared for. And I know you guys are probably wondering, did Natalie want to pursue a degree in education? And the answer is correct. She did. Aww. So we essentially lost one lost. of our own. Wow. I figured like, she'd want to do like veterinarian. Like oh, she's she, like loving all these animals. And I mean, granted, I feel like as a teacher, you love all creatures, right? I mean, well, kind of. I pushed it. I, I'm sorry. I was I, like, I, mm, I, my I students my all know Miss Brandt creatures. Yeah, I retract. I retract. And there are plenty of creatures in my classroom. Crickets. I have A-Town stomped them. Y'all can yell at me if you want. I, yeah. Mm, all my kids, Miss Brandt, there's a creature. Get it. Get it gone. Get, Get it. it out. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So as far as Natalie and Blake, they had been friends since they were kids. And the pair dated for three years and then broke up in February of 2023. So Brooklyn, the best friend, stated that they broke up because Blake had assaulted Natalie. Whoa. Now, yeah. Blake, who also happened to be a wrestler and a football player, allegedly threw her across the room with a group of friends present. Wow. So he did that, like, in front of people. Yes. Wow. Allegedly threw her across a room. Yeah, we got to break up. Sorry about that. Like... Mm -hmm. That's With no go. People and that makes present? me think too. That makes me think like, what did he do when people weren't present? Because you don't escalate that quickly. Like you just don't. People mm-hmm. like that don't just mm-hmm. escalate that quickly. Mm-hmm. And that makes me wonder like, you got so comfortable in this relationship or whatever you were doing to her behind closed doors, allegedly, allegedly mm-hmm. that you then did this in front of people thinking you could still get away with it, allegedly. And then also, like, granted, assaulting someone is never the answer. But right. what did she do to get you right. that angry that you would th- allegedly throw her across a room mm. with friends present who are going to see this and are yeah. going to have a reaction? I would have been interested to be a fly on the wall at the reaction that those friends had because if, if it, you ain't coming on my trip because I cannot agree with these action, actions. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I there was never any explanation of how they ended up on the same trip. But I think like they remained the friends school. after, yeah. which how do you do that? Like, you're because a good person. Because it shows she's a good person, yeah. Like, you're a good person. Because I would have been like, you're never, ever... Gonna be around me again. ...ever going to be blessed with my presence ever again mm-hmm. in your life. Correct. If you had the audacity to mm-hmm. do that, nah. Yeah. Although he attempted to right his wrong and win her back, the two did not get back together and remained friends after that. So, again, how? Better than me. Better than but me, girl. I feel like, I guess, given what we know happened to her, um, I think that she might have seen it as them being friends. But I think the 
people like that then become obsessive. Like, what do you mean my roses didn't get you back? What do you mean I've tried for a mm. whole week? Like, I've been nice for, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, people yeah. like that that are like, well, I said I was sorry. I made one mm-hmm. mistake. I, I said I was sorry. What do you mean you can't forgive me? Like, we always work it out. What do you mean this time is different? You know what I mean? So then it becomes obsessive a little bit. And like, yeah, he can play, he can play the role of a friend and convince her that they're mm-hmm. friends. Mm-hmm. But deep down, something might be going yeah, on. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Maybe he just was like, well, as long as we're friends, I could, you know. Yeah, I have a chance. Be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. According to one source, Blake was known for his temper. Mm. However, no one, not even Brooklyn, could have ever believed that he was capable of something like this. After the tragedy, Brooklyn stated the following. I'm angry at him because he is a better person than this. He truly is. So like, Mm, that's hard. Yeah. That's hard. I mean, especially when you've been friends with these people, you know, your whole life, mm-hmm. essentially, because when you're 18, that's your whole life. Yeah. And you've seen the good in him. Mm-hmm. And so it's hard to wrap your head around that he could allegedly do something. Yeah, like, like this, this kid that we grew up with who, like, you know, yeah. ate his yeah. boogers. Right. Allegedly. I'm just, you know. You know. Um, do something like this. Right. It's hard to wrap your head around. Yeah. hmm Let's jump forward and talk about what allegedly happened the day prior to the murder. Now, Natalie and Blake had an argument because she was texting another man. However, sources stated that their argument was resolved quickly. And also, it better have been resolved quickly because... Because you... She's you not got yours. no ground. She is not No yours. ground to stand on. So if she want to text that man, she could text that man. Why? Yeah. Because you're not her man. Correct. You forfeited that right. Yes. When you allegedly Flag did what you play. did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. You fumbled. And somebody else recovered. Mm-hmm. Later that evening, the group of newly graduates went to a club. However, Natalie ended up going back to the rental early with Blake because she didn't feel that great. It's not said, like, why, what exactly was going on, but she just was under the weather and was like, I got to go back. Mm-hmm. Two more friends from their group arrived back at the rental around 10.45 p.m. It's noted that they had to go in through the back of the house because no one was answering the front door. So I'm guessing they were ringing, knocking. No one was answering the front door. Mm-hmm. Mind you, Natalie and Blake are inside. Are there. hmm Okay. According to one source, one friend heard three loud thuds but noticed nothing out of the ordinary when he checked the living room. He also attempted to open the bedroom door that Natalie and Blake were in, but was unable to get in due to it being locked. Oh, then we would have to kick it down. Yeah. I mean, because I just want to like, did the thuds come from upstairs? Like, I just, where did you hear the thuds? And I mean, you, you okay, this is clearly a, a tight-knit group or mm-hmm. a small school of some mm-hmm. sort, right? These kids have clearly known each other for a while. Mm-hmm. If I knew, if I had, if I showed up at ten at ten forty five, right, and I knew that Blake and Natalie had gone home together, and I knew what had happened allegedly at another event with Blake and Natalie, and that's why they broke up, and I know that Blake's temper is just astronomical, blah blah blah. Like I'm getting in there to lay eyes on my friend Natalie. Like I'm I'm just gonna do that. But also remember, they didn't think they knew he had a temper, but they never. Thought that, and it's not that I even think I would have had that thought. It just would have been like more of like a domestic concern. Mm. Not, I don't. Yes, yeah. I would not think that my friend yeah. would go to that extreme. But at least I would have some kind of concern. I understand. I that. would have some reservations as to like, is she in there crying? Like, do I, does she need to come out of there? Like, mm-hmm. is she comfortable? Yeah, and I don't know if it was just like a like, hey, you guys good in there? Or just like jiggle. And it was like, ah, that like they're probably like asleep or something. I don't right. Again, I don't know what the attempt to get in the room looked like. Okay? Right. Eventually the remaining friends returned back to the rental and were all asleep by 7 a.m. So remember, he came out of the room around nine. So they had like literally oh. probably just fallen into a very deep REM sleep. We're just well on the way to Snooze Land, and he just busts out the room like. Natalie with a stab wound in his mm. chest, you know? So, mm. mm-hmm. okay. So, 
That's when I'm like, I guess when you said early morning, that's clearly why they're asleep because they had only just got home from the club. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, 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 gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, they were they were partying hard. Mm. I remember mm-hmm. those days when I used to be able to do that. Not anymore. Um, I don't think I've ever stayed out that late. Not any. Have I? Let me tell you a side note. So my friends always, every year, we have a cookies and cocktails event. And it's hosted at another friend's house. And you make the rules. It's normally a competition. You have the judges. You know, each team makes a cookie and a cocktail, has to judge kind of thing. Mine was at my, it was at my house this year. And it was very chill. It was like, bring a cookie, like bring a little drink. Like it's not anything crazy. We just gonna play games, have a good time. Anyway, they left my apartment at five o'clock in the morning. Whoa. However, comma, we were all asleep in some way, shape, or form in this apartment at different times of the night. (laughs) Like some people were asleep by 10. Some people were asleep by 11. Some people took a nap at 10, woke up at 12, were up until 2, went back to sleep, woke up at 5. Like, (laughs) it was crazy. When I come to your house and if I hit the love sack, I'm out. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows. They'll be like, you got my blanket in the love sack. They all, that's everybody love sack. It's not just, Mm -hmm. like, if all my friends were here at once, they would have to fight for the death for that love sack, honestly. But like, yeah. even at 5 a.m. and at 5 a.m. when they left, I was still in like a haze. Like I was not even full, like. Wow. It was like, no. are people leaving? Like what's going on? Like it was, yeah, it was <laughs> no, no, no. chaos. So even that was a little too much for me. And I wasn't even awake till 5 a.m. So. Mm. Yeah, 7 a.m. is pushing it. Mm. But these, co- these almost college folks, they just get started. They have that youth in them. They have that, you know, do. that You're drive, right. you know? Yeah. This brings us back to where we began. Natalie's death left her community completely devastated and shocked that something like this could happen in their small town. Troy Dawson, the principal at Philo High School, stated the following after learning about Natalie's death. We're hurting. It's a tragedy. She was well-liked by her classmates and teachers and was very sweet and very funny. That's so sweet. I know, right? Blake's bond hearing was on June 29th, 2023. It was here that Natalie's family stated the following in court. He should never, ever be free again, let alone alive to taste and feel freedom after three weeks when he took our beautiful daughter from this world. Anyone who feels different should truly feel ashamed of themselves. With right and wrong so undefined in the times we've all lived in, this should be an easy choice. So so when they arrested him, they arrested him two days after the death, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so that, that tells me that they had no other suspects. Like it was... I mean, but we interview think, everybody in the house, and then right. I but know. Think you're and locked think, in this room with this correct this girl. Correct. You come out screaming with a self-inflicted stab wound to your chest. Yeah. So Frantic. I'm thinking that the stab wound was like to to divert the attention. Like somebody came in the room and attacked us. But where they go? Because like I don't even know the layout of this rental. But is it a two story? Did he jump out the window? Like what's going on? Right. Like, Right, right. So, and he just stabbed you, but he strangled Natalie. Like, that makes no sense. And also, I don't know about, like, how other people's, like, senior trip. Granted, I went on my senior trip. Like, it was through the school. But I'm guessing this Mm -hmm. is, like, a celebration trip. Like, there's no parents that go on trips like this. I just... Yeah. I'm, no I'm not judging by any means. Like, no means. I just didn't know if that's what life is like in 2023. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like back in Dang. 2017... There would have been a chaperone. Yeah. yeah. Or the only James's trip was chaperone. Yeah. Or the only senior trip I'm going on is the one that like my school is going and like people from my school, like staff members yeah. are coming to chaperone on a trip. Like mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know of other trips yeah. that people go outside with just themselves. That's just me. I don't, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. That's true. That's right. True. Like how like down south, is that the same get up? No, ours are chaperoned. Yeah. Ours yeah. is chaperoned. I mean. <sighs> I don't know because I did go on spring break by myself at like 16, 17. Like nobody? Yeah, no adults. We didn't have any adults. Wait, just ch- just 16-year-olds? 
Yeah. How yeah, you got into we, the hotel? Uh, well, we stayed at one of my friend's aunt's condos. Oh. But a group of boys that I went to high school with, they did stay at a hotel. And I'm not really sure who checked them in. Because, you know what question. I'm saying? Because you got to be a certain... Know, they always ask for your ID because you got to be at least 18, right? Yeah, now that I think about it. Yeah. That's very true. Right? I don't know who checked them in. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Huh. I don't... Huh. How y'all get in? I don't speak to any of them, so I don't know. If y'all are listening, you know, let us know how you did that. Go ask that question because uh, I don't talk to any of those folks. Hey, they might be lurking. Yeah. If you are, you know. They might. They might. Let us know because we're curious. We have questions. How how y'all checking in that hotel? Because I remember that spring break. I remember that spring break. I do. I remember that spring break. Despite their efforts, Third Judicial Circuit Judge Thomas Cooper Jr. set Blake's bond at $150,000, stating that there was nothing in Blake's background that shows he is a violent person. And I'm, I get that. Because I guess record-wise... That's a really low amount. That's low. That's a low bond. Because you only have to pay 10% of that. Mm, mm, mm. Which, granted, to the average family, that's fifteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars. That's still a lot of money. Yeah. Like, who has that lying around? I don't know. And then it's just like, I mean, when they said he's not a violent person, like, did they take into account what happened to Natalie? Do they have proof of that though? D- yeah, I was about to say, do mm-hmm. they have proof, or is that like a bunch of her girlfriends coming forward? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. now I'm not. I, do I think it happened? Yeah. Is that my opinion? Sure, but um. I'm just never not going to take yeah. a female side. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but mm-hmm. that's me having, being a girl. Mm-hmm. I don't, and and also, what allegedly happened when he threw her, right? Mm-hmm. Did that ever make it to her parents? Because I feel like if it did, they would have filed charges. Probably. Because my parents would have filed yeah. charges. So I'm wondering, do her parents even yeah. know about that incident? Yeah, I'm waiting to see, because like I said, this is, we're still awaiting trials. So like, Wow. Things are going to come out, possibly, unless he pleads guilty. Mm-hmm. So more things will come of this whenever. But did he bail out? Because that's not a lot of money. Well, here we go. Okay. Judge Cooper Jr. stated the following. In this particular case, he has not denied responsibility. He has acknowledged it. He's recognized it and apparently is facing up to it as best as he can. So I don't really know what that means. Hmm. That's telling me that he, he said guilty. he did it. Right. Okay. But nothing said that he's... But if you, but if you plead guilty, then you don't have to go to trial. You just go to sentencing. Yeah. So, so what are you... Because if you, you know, plead guilty, you just have to go straight to sentencing, right? There's no trial. You're just, boom, you said you did it. Now we're done. So are we trying to plead not guilty by reason of blank? Possibly. It's possible. Okay. The bond was only due to the condition that Blake waived his extradition to Ohio. And I'm confused because I know... Like, waived his extradition means, like, he's saying, like, oh, I'm not being sent back to Ohio. Right? Right, right. But he was released in the, to the custody of his parents. Which I assume live in Ohio. So I don't understand what that means. So maybe there was a condition that he couldn't go back to Ohio. But he's going to his parents who live in Ohio, right? Maybe they had to move. Maybe. It's just a lot of confusion. And so he's on house arrest, clearly in the custody of his parents. Yeah, yeah. And has to wear an ankle monitor. Hmm. And the judge also ordered Blake to receive a mental evaluation, which is required to his bond. So, Mm -hmm. and it it says, according to one source, Blake had been allegedly self-harming and they were concerned about him possibly being suicidal. So in the event that anything is discovered in the evaluation, the judge can immediately deny the bond. So I, is he still in jail? Because this health, Thing hasn't been done yet. The mental evaluation, like he has to get a clear mental evaluation in order to get this bond, is what it sounds like. Mm. Right? So well, I I took it as he has to, okay. So you paid your bond, you're gonna get out, you're going to your parents. 
you have how I took it was uh-huh. you have this amount of time to go get a health evaluation. If they find anything in that health evaluation, you have to report back to prison or jail, not prison, jail. Um, that's a possibility too. Because mm-hmm. that would be revoking your bond, which yeah. the judge has the right to do. Okay. Because I'm just like, I don't, because then some sources were like, he's still locked Also are like, okay, so if you, if this all took place in the, the Carolinas, right? Mm-hmm. But you're from Ohio. Okay. So you are back at your parents' house in Ohio. Mm-hmm. And you are you it, I'm just confused with like the the house arrest thing, right? Because are they are they stop, are the Carolina police working with the Ohio police because like what if he goes and misses curfew? Like are Who's come? Because if the Carolina police showing up, they showing up a day later. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like not getting there. A lot of questions. Yeah, a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. A lot of good mm-hmm. questions that I would love the answers mm-hmm. to, but I simply don't have them. Um, and that is the case of the death of Natalie Martin. And as per usual, I'll be sure to post any updates. You know, if there, it's a substantial amount of like. Updates, maybe I'll make it like a mini episode to kind of give you some more information about it. But I don't know what evidence the police may have on Blake to tie him to the murder. But what do you think allegedly happened? I think my opinion Mm -hmm. with no evidence, I think, I believe that he did it. And I believe that the stab wound was to deflect, but he did not have his story straight in enough time. Granted, that doesn't really make sense to me because she was already in rigor. And so you had plenty of time to get your story straight. But the way it's sounding is it was a fresh wound. So it's kind of like you did all of that really on impulse. Yeah, so it wasn't like you were in there like, oh my God, what do I do? I did this horrible thing. Let me just stab my eye. We're just going to do it. Boom. Where's Natalie? You know what I mean? Yes, mm-hmm. correct. That's how I'm visualizing mm-hmm. all of this. And now I'm really confused by the whole he's taking responsibility because in the court of law, if you've pleaded guilty, there is no trial. Yes. So that makes me think that his defense has said, we're not going to go to trial and say that he didn't do it because he did it. And he said he did it. We're going to go to trial and say he did it because blank. And that's why he should be found guilty. So like, the insanity plea or under the influence mm-hmm. or not in his right state of mind mm-hmm. or self-defense. You know, they could argue that she gave him the stab wound. I don't know. How she gave him the stab wound? I'm just saying they could argue that we've seen them argue crazier things. Mm-hmm. True. You're not wrong about that. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. Well, that was the case. Well, mm-hmm. thank you for bringing that to You're us. You're welcome. You know? Yeah. If you knew about this case, you know, put a hand up emoji in the comments. And if not, then put a, oh my gosh, I had no idea. You know, I'm so shook if. Um, yeah. Yes. So yeah, that was the case. Um, it is about to be 11 o'clock my time. 10 o'clock yep, Brooke's time. 10 o'clock. I'm going to go get ready for bed. Got to wake yeah, up early too. and make up my, make my smoothie breakfast. Got to stay yeah. on the path. You do. Tomorrow starts my path. Let's go, girl. Yeah, I can do this. You want to be accountability partners? Yes. Please make sure. Okay. There's the one thing I need accountability for. Okay. I need accountability to take my vitamins. Okay. So because when I, I take my so... vitamins, but you get to school, I think, before. No. Yeah, you get to school before me. You keep your vitamins at school? I don't get to school before you because I go to school on your time zone. Remember? Oh, yeah. What time do you get to work? I get to work at 8.15. Yeah, you get to work for me. I get to work at 8.35. Okay. Yeah. But you take your vitamins with you to work? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So when I take my vitamins, I will text you and tell you to take your vitamins. Because you have to, because I have to eat my breakfast before I can take my vitamins. Okay, and you got, yeah. So you get there a little before, so your breakfast should be in your tum-tum at that point. And I'll text Correct. you. Yep. That's the accountability that I need okay. because I am so bad about going two days and then I'll go three days without taking them. Okay. And then that's defeating the purpose. It's not doing anything. Yeah, I keep it right next to my computer. So as soon as I sit down, I'm like, ooh, got to take my vitamins. And I pull out my little pack. Care of. Okay. You know? Well, that's what I need. Mm-hmm. 
Everybody make sure Brooke takes her vitamins. <laughs> Watch. Trying DMs. to have a baby. 835, <laughs> take your vitamins. Just a plethora yep. of DMs. Blow me up. <laughs> yep. Every day. <laughs> oh, gosh. Bet you never forget again. Bet you won't. No. Bet you won't. Hope I don't. All right, y'all. Well, as always, the bell don't dismiss you. We do. So we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.